to our video today. We're gonna to do a little Q&A for everybody because you got questions and we know about ourselves. <laughs> so you got some for you me. You ready? Okay. Yeah. First question is, what eyeliner do you use? What eyeliner do I use? Yeah, what's an My eyeliner? eyeliner. Not My an eyeliner. My eyeliner. I use, I use Elf. 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 The Elf eyeliner. The Elf eyeliner because it's the cheapest. I should look it up. Um, I was gonna look it up. Hold on, I gotta look it up because it was super inexpensive. I am all about department store cosmetics. I'm not, a, I'm not very fancy when it comes to that. Even when I go on stage and stuff, I don't have very many, you know, of the fancy things. Three dollars. Three dollars. Did you have it? Three dollars. Right yep. Three dollars. Three dollars. So you too can wear beautiful eyeliner like I have. <laughs> so liquid eyeliner is kind of a thing like with being a quadriplegic and relearning how to do everything when I was in the hospital and you know turning on the light switch and and all of those things they just seem so hard and you know putting my makeup back on that was like the first thing I learned how to do was my makeup because I was motivated to put my makeup back on and I hadn't had makeup on in four months you know almost and so I had to have my makeup back on my face and my eyebrows, I hadn't like plucked them like the whole time I was in the hospital. So by the time I got to rehab, I had these like big bushy eyebrows. <laughs> like, and so I was very motivated to put makeup on. So I learned that. And I actually didn't do liquid liner right away. Then I went to Miss Wheelchair America and I met another quadriplegic. And when she got paralyzed and her occupational therapist was like, bring all your makeup, we'll learn to put your makeup back on. Um, she was telling me how her occupational therapist like saw her liquid liner and was like, like she's never gonna be able to put her liquid liner back on, but you know, if you're motivated, if you're motivated to put makeup on, then you're gonna figure out a way. Like you just will. So anyway, she learned right away how to put on liquid liner and I really liked her eyes. I thought she was beautiful. She was Miss Rhode Island. And so I wanted liquid liner too, so I got me some liquid liner, the $3 elf from Walmart. And I too have beautiful eyes. Yes. <laughs> you do. <laughs> All right, next, next question. Next thing. What kind of pen do you like the best for writing? The pen question. Okay, so my hands are paralyzed. Boop, 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 boop. I used to take an elastic headband and wrap it around my hand and shove the pen in there and that's how I would write um, or use a fork. In learning how to do it, I had to choose the right pen to use. So a ballpoint pen, I can't write very well with a ballpoint pen, um, but I can write very well. In fact, I have one on my person because I was gonna help my daughter with her math, but Sharpie. So this is obviously a marker and it works excellently because it just is like flowy. I don't have to use any pressure. So I can use a Sharpie with no trouble at all. I just weave it between my fingers and boop, 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 boop. I can just write away with a Sharpie. And the next best thing, when I have to have like real penmanship, you know, when you need a real pen like for an application or you're filling out a form, or you're at the doctor's office, or the dentist, or whatever, and they need you to fill out a form, I use this pen, and I always have these pens in my purse, you know, with me, so that I can use them if I need them. Precision V7 Rolling Ball Fine Point Pen. So that's this, woo! You can, that's, you can write with precision <laughs> with that thing. Precision V7, so just take it, then I could just write, just like this, just like a Sharpie, but it's really, really fine really, you know, skinny, skinny writing on this. So my penmanship went on a diet and it's not quite so thick. <laughs> when I write, it can be nice and fine and really beautiful. I have beautiful penmanship. They say that penmanship, handwriting, should actually be called brain writing because even if you use the use of your hands or your hands completely and you start writing with your feet or your mouth or whatever, your handwriting ultimately turns into the handwriting that you had already and that you know it, it evolves as you would evolve so that's why you can read handwriting handwriting analysis and stuff because it's like how your whole brain would write it it's not necessarily how your hands write it so it's interesting okay the next question okay next question <clears throat> do you journal yes okay the next question oh, yeah. <laughs> I try to write in my journal Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and then I take Saturday and Sunday off. You know, when I grew up, my dad always had us write in our journal on Sunday, but I like the weekends for a break. And so I write in my own journal Monday through Friday, 
and I have a journal for each one of my kids. So my, my oldest daughter, I wrote in her journal Monday through Friday, every day of her life, every Monday through Friday of her life until she was eight years old. And at eight years old, I was like passing it on to her. Like, you get to write in your own journal now. My second daughter was born. I started keeping, actually, and not even born. Like as soon as I discovered I was going to have a baby, like I started to keep a journal for each kid. So they have, they, they have all the whole process. Anything that has to do with them, I'm like, oh my gosh, I can't wait to find out if you're a boy or a girl. I'm pretty sure you're a boy. That's what every <laughs> single girl of mine has in their journal. I'm pretty sure you're a boy. <laughs> But then they would they would get everything, everything. Like, oh, I was so sick today. You're the size of a kumquat. You know, things like that. So I write in their journal Monday through Friday, their, their whole life until they're eight. So I've got a couple more years of journal writing for my second and about seven more years <laughs> for, my, for my baby. And hopefully quite a lot of years for myself of Monday through Friday journal writing. You can express yourself as yourself in your journal. I don't have to pretend I'm anyone else. I don't have to use clean language. I can say it like I feel it. I can say it like it is. I can talk about it how I need to. And I just put it all in my journal and then I can be like a nice, decent person every other time for the most part. I'm pretty decent. Ready? No comment. Yes. No comment from She's the peanut gallery. Decent. Very decent. Yeah, it's too late. It's too late. Very decent. I wouldn't out. say decent. I'd say you're like amazing. Mm. Not decent. Okay. You keep the language in the book, in the journal. Is that what you're saying? Try to. <laughs> question four. This looks like a two-part question. Two-part question. This is the first part, and then I'll do the second part. Did you stop all of your pain meds when you found out you were pregnant? And then the second part of the question is, I don't know if it's a frequently asked question, but it's like a frequently thought question <laughs> oh. that isn't asked. But it says, did you have natural childbirth? Okay, okay. Those are, those are two very different questions. Very personal questions. Yeah, very personal questions, very different questions. First part of that question, did I stop all of my pain medication when I found out I was pregnant? The answer to that is yes, but the follow-up part of that is just like any other woman would have stopped pain medications when she found out she was pregnant. So I stopped taking like Advil if I got a headache or Tylenol, you know, or stuff like that. I didn't take any of that. But that question kind of implies that I'm on pain medication, like I'm on pain management medication just because I'm in a wheelchair and that I'm not. Some people are on pain management medications um, for being in a wheelchair for, you know, for whatever, whatever disability they have, uh, but I'm not. I don't take any medication regularly, period. <laughs> well, some people feel like pain in their legs, right? They can't move, right. they feel pain. But, Nerve pain. But you luckily yeah. don't feel any pain at all. So lucky. So I'm very, very blessed. So I don't take any medication. And so that question kind of implies that like I was on pain meds and I stopped them when I was pregnant and I wasn't ever on them, just on take Tylenol if I have a headache or you know, stub my knuckles on my hand. <laughs> Actually, I wouldn't take any Tylenol for that, but. Second part, did you have natural childbirth? So natural is in like, not a C-section? Yes. Natural is in like, no medicine? No. So that is tricky to explain a little bit, a little bit tricky to understand. So I'm a quadriplegic, which means, there's something called autonomic dysreflexia, which means that your body is trying to tell your brain when it's in pain. And so the, the signal, like if you stub your toe, the signals would come all the way up your body, all the way up your spinal cord to try to get to your brain, and it stops at the level of injury, and then it gets pushed back down. And so then it would try again to say, hey, you stubbed your toe, you're in pain, and then it would only be able to go to your level of injury, gets pushed back down, it would try again, and again, and again, and again, and not be able to make it. So that process causes autonomic dysreflexia, which means, um, I don't know what that means actually, <laughs> but that's what it does. And so when your body tries to tell your brain that it's in pain and it can't make it past the level, it causes pain like response. So with me, I'll start to sweat, a little bit above my level of injury. So my, my neck will sweat, my, my scalp will sweat, my arms on the top will sweat, just to tell me that I'm in pain below my level of injury, which is my chest line. In short, when you're delivering a baby, it's assumed that you're in pain. We don't want the pain responses to try to go to your brain and be like, hey, you're in pain. Did you know you're in pain? You're in pain. You're in severe pain. This is painful. <laughs> like I don't, we didn't want my body to do that. And so I had to have an epidural to like, 
tell my body that it was okay. <laughs> just for safety. Yeah, well, safety reasons. Wasn't to limit pain from your feeling it, but. Right. And so I had an epidural and I was like, oh my gosh, I can't wait to feel like what it feels to be more paralyzed. <laughs> I didn't feel it at all. I didn't, nothing changed. It was crazy. So it was crazy because it wasn't crazy, I guess. And so I guess the question that you might have in your mind right now is, well, why is that a bad thing? Like if you just start sweating, you know, when your body's trying to tell you you're in pain. Um, if it's a lot of pain and if it becomes too much and if the pain goes on for too long, that process of trying to send the signal and getting the signal back down, it can cause a stress stroke. So they're trying to avoid a stress stroke and so that's why, that's why I had an epidural. So there you go. And this is a really personal question. I'm really glad that somebody asked it because um, I'm, I'm happy to share information like this for people who really want to know. And you know, it's really good to know things like this, I feel like. We've been re really open about it and we actually made a video. So you can actually watch like, our video of uh, the last time I had a baby. I don't know, like, did we shoot the, the epidural part? I think so. The Part epidural? Yeah, so I got an epidural and here. I was in labor for like two days. We'll link the video in the We should watch it again. We, I hardly remember it. It was like so <laughs> We should watch it and comment on it. Yeah. Like, <laughs> you don't oh my remember gosh, anything. I don't probably. remember. Last question. You ready, Meg? I'm ready. This one says, I got a question for both of y'all. Who mm -hmm. loves to cook? Who does the cooking? <laughs> you want to take this one? Chef Wit. <laughs> Who loves to cook? Wait, who does the best cooking? Who does the best cooking? It's probably Wit, I have to be honest. Like he always follows the recipe. Unless someone comes over for dinner, then she'll make something super what? special, what? fancy. <laughs> What's your friend Rachel's over here? I know, I do cook really well for Rachel. <laughs> she like comes over and she's like, this is the best food ever. And I'm like, I will make you more. I, I cook a lot, no, I cook she a cooks, lot. She cooks the most for sure. And Wit follows the recipe. You do the more recipe. of the cooking and yeah, you don't. Follow the re you open a recipe and then just do whatever. I look at the ingredients. I'm like, okay, put those together, make you, this. You were helping our oldest daughter, Zula, cook the other day, <laughs> and she was just dumping stuff in like you. I don't know what you guys are doing. I was like, why do you even use a recipe? Just so guess. We, so just we guess. can see what ingredients <laughs> goes in it. Wit will follow a recipe to the letter. Like he's getting out eighth of a teaspoon measurements. In the comments, let us know who follows a recipe. Yeah. Who doesn't. Yeah, if you follow a recipe, or if you just kind of look at a recipe to get an idea of what goes into the dish. Okay, so there you go. There was some questions and answers for you. So if you have any questions, let us know in the comments. We'll be so happy to look at those and answer those for you. And let us know if you follow a recipe, because I'd be terribly interested to, <laughs> to know. So thanks so much for watching. And remember, when life gets too hard to stand, just keep on rolling.